All right, welcome. We are going through a two weeks uh, series called "Are You Passing the Test?" As last week we showed, uh, and, and then just a little bit ago we showed the uh, little cupcake test. Yeah, I, I had a cupcake test this week myself. Uh, my, our coworker Debbie, her, it was her birthday, and her husband brought in two things of cupcakes. Yeah, well, she only took one home and left one there. Through the week, I had six. <laughs> I failed the test. <laughs> they were good cupcakes, so moist and just the you know it was, the icing was like nice. It was beautiful. It was just tasted really good. I just had to have one, you know. But you know, through life, as we looked last week, we're, we're going through tests in our lives and issues through our lives, and 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 uh, so many of us are are failing the test, and that's why we're asking the question: Are you passing the test? You know, and uh, as last week we looked at, God is even testing us in 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 our lives some things and circumstances that are or in our lives, but what about the question about if we're being tested, is it okay to test God? You know, can we test God? And most, play, you know, most people are going to say, no, 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 you can't test God. It says in Deuteronomy, you know, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16, it says, hey, hey, he says, hey, hey, he says, don't, don't test the Lord your God. And then even in the, uh, in the New Testament, Jesus, you know, he said when he was in the wilderness, it says, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So in that, it's to ask this question as well, I don't understand this. If you're saying test God, in it, but it says not to test God, well, I don't understand that. Well, here's how it is. Do not test God unless he says it's okay for you to test him. How's that? Interesting. Okay. So, hold your questions, okay? Write them down, maybe. <laughs> Jaden's back there going like this. He's got his hand up. He's got, this is interesting. This must be interesting. You know, because all you, you kids in school, you know, you, you got to have, you got to take tests, right? Right? Yeah, so it's the same thing. You're going to go through life, and things are going to happen, and you're wondering why they're happening. So that means it might be a test that you're going through. So you want to pass the test. So sometimes it's okay, we learned last week, to ask God, help me pass this test so I don't have to take it over again because I don't know about you I hate taking tests and I sure don't want to take another one over and over and over again it's frustrating you know especially sometimes when you have some people in your lives in there you know and it's okay it, God wants to get them out but you keep flunking the test so they got to stay you know and that's what we kind of covered last week but this week we're going to took it we're going to look at testing God so if you have your Bibles and you want to turn, it's going to be up here also on the screen. Uh, but you might, might want to open your Bibles or maybe your little Bible app. You know, especially if you're watching online, get on your little Bible app or open up your Bible because this is going to be really, you might want to take some notes, especially if you're watching online. All right. So in Malachi chapter 3, if you turn your Bibles, Malachi chapter 3, that's in the Old Testament, kind of towards the back. We're going to read verses 6 through 11. 6 through 11. It says in verse 6, it says, for I, the Lord, do not change. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? He doesn't change. I think it might be good because we can know who he is by reading about him. All right? All right. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. Here's where he's saying in that ver little verse 6 right there. He's, he's saying, it's a good thing I don't change, you know, because if I did, I would kill you all because you are being bad. But... Because what he did in the past, he doesn't change. He has, very, he has a lot of mercy and a lot of grace. Verse 7. From the days of your father, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In your tithes and contributions. Verse 9. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me. The whole nation of you. Bring the full tithes into the storehouse, and there may be food in my house. And thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. There it is, right there. Black and white. Put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open up the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need, I will rebuke the devourers for you so that 
It will not destroy the fruit of your soil, and your vines in the fields shall not fa fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Malachi. He was uh, about 400 years before Jesus was, uh, was, uh, came to the earth. He was in this context. He was around the, the era of Ezra and Nehemiah. And, and he, was, he was a man that God laid on his heart to, to, to confront the people of God, that they were churchy people. They went to the church. But here what they were doing, they were missing out on one thing. They were stealing from God. It's the idea of thinking, well, wow, what do you mean stealing from God? And he was very clear about it. They were taking their tithes and they were taking their contributions and they were keeping it to themselves. Let me, let me give you 10 facts about tithing. 10 facts about tithing. Number one, tithing means a tenth, 10%. It means just, you know, it's like a dollar, 10 cents. $100, 10 dollars, 10%, 10 10 okay? It's used 41 times in the Old and New Testament. It's talked about tithing. All right? Next, it says, it describes the immediate gift of 10% of your income at your first opportunity. The 10% is also what he's saying here. As the first as it comes in, you get it out of your hands. So like if you get paid every week on Friday, you put it aside on Friday, and on Sunday, you, you, you're giving it to your church. Unless your church, when you're watching online, you go to a church and you're not tithing. He's saying what you do is maybe it'd be better for you as you're doing your bills on Friday because you got your paycheck. Go online to your church because most churches, we don't have it right now. But you can go on, online and you can give your tithes online. If, if you have a problem of holding on to it until Sunday and writing out your check or bring your cash and have it in your little envelope, you know. But he's saying, give it immediately, immediately. Give it away. Number three, it's a symbol. Everything belongs to God. The building belongs to God. This church belongs to God. Your family belongs to God. This nation belongs to God. This universe, the Bible says that God spoke the words were, were, and it, were, it was formed. It all belongs to God. Are you, with, are you with me on understanding that? Everything belongs to God. So, the tithe then is just a symbol of the fact that God owns everything and you're just giving a portion of it back to Him. You're being a good steward. Okay, it's like you're a manager. Let's say you was out applying for a job and, you, and you, you got this job and part of your job was to take care of the business. You know, you're, you're also taking care of the finances. You're taking care of the, what, 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 if you're in a restaurant, you're taking care of the food. And maybe if you're in health care, you're taking care of the people. You know, if you're in child care, you're taking care of the kids. You know, you're, you're responsible for all of this. You're taking care of it because it's what? It's not yours. And so to keep your job, you've got to be responsible and do what's right. So it's a symbol that everything belongs to God. The next, it is, uh, I lost it. Where'd it go? There it is. It is, an, it, it, is, it is to be off the top. It's right off the top. It's saying, you know, when you get your money in, you're taking the 10% right off the the top of, the, of what your money comes in. The gross. Okay? Not after, you know, you look at your paycheck tub, you go to IDP, you know, and you, get, you, pl you put your, your password, your username and password in, and next thing it comes up, your little paycheck stub on the online thing there, and it says, you made this amount, and then you brought this amount home. And you think you're going to tithe on this one that you brought home. No, no, no. You tithe on everything off the top. Do you think it would be like kind of cool that God would give you the leftovers of 10%? I don't, think, I don't think that's cool. That God would give you the leftovers of 10%. So why are you giving the leftovers of God? I'm going to pay my house bill. I'm going to pay my insurance. I'm going to buy me some food. And then I'm going to pay my tithes. Most people's cases are like that. By the time they get to that part, there is no enough money for the tithe. That's the issue. That's what this whole point right here is what God's saying, test me on. We're going to get to that. 
How, how many conversations I've had in just this little while, and, and this wasn't even, you know, about, what was it, two or three weeks ago, we talked about generosity. And then God brings this, and it says, bring it again. And we're bringing it again about giving to where it belongs to God. Then, then it's there, the, the, it's a universal principle like Sabbath rest. Most times people have a problem with a tithing because they think it's a law. It's a, well, that's the law of the Old Testament. I don't have to give. You know, it, it, it's something that, you know, it, but look, back in the Garden of Eden, you know, when they came out of the Garden of Eden, they, they were automatically, Cain and Abel, what did they do? They tithe. They gave a sacrifice right off the top. One of them messed up. He didn't, he didn't sacrifice the right thing, but. It's still the point. Then Abraham, uh, Abraham, he gave, uh, he brought his ties to Melchizedek uh, 400 years before the law was even given. It's the idea of saying to yourself, "As look, it's a principle that God has put in His Word to test Him, to try Him, that He will show Himself faithful." It's one of those things that, that it happened before the law and it didn't stop at the cross. We'll, we'll hit that one here in a, in a few minutes. Then there's the, it was part of the law, but predated the law and continues after the law, as I, I just said. It was practiced through church history. Check this one out. Since the early days, it was, it, it has been recognized, uh, recognized through, through churches, through church history, that tithing is a part of the New Testament. The, mod the modern kind of thing. Well, tithing that's not for today um, is what it is. It says, it, recognized, it was recognized legally in England in 796 A.D. by 1,545 people of a council of Trent that they gathered together and recognized that this, this was something that they wanted to make happen, that it was, if you don't give a tithe of this church, we're kicking you out of the church. Now, fortunately, it really doesn't happen too much around here today, but I know places in other countries that if you don't give your tithes, they got guards standing at the door with the list of names saying they ain't allowed in the church today. You, got, you go to the church to ask for any help, maybe some help with some food or something, you just had something, you know, and what do they do? If your name's on the list for not tithing anywhere in the past, you don't get no help. That goes on today in other countries. But fortunately, we don't have that issue. But it's, it's the idea of saying, though, it, it's the importance that the church saw that, that you know, 1,500 men, God as a council said, this is important. Sometimes we go overboard in, in presenting the importance. That's why some pastors, they kind of go overboard and they're trying to browbeat you to do certain things. I'm not browbeating you. I'm just telling you the facts of what God's word says and what it is. And it's all on you, whether you want to tithe or you don't want to tithe. But it's saying here that the importance of that, that God wants you to do that, and these men saw that, that they implemented, it's, it's in our bylaws, you don't tithe, you don't get to come in. When you come to the door and you show your little check, we let you in. But we don't, I mean, we don't do that here, but there's churches still today that, that, that think that way and act that way. Uh, next is, is, it is a thermometer of spiritual vitality. It really shows your walk with Christ spiritually of how, that if, if, if I was able to look at your checkbook and see how much that you're, you're giving, it, how many checks once a week or once a month, depending on how much you're getting paid, it shows how much you love God and how much, because you don't really realize how much God has done for you. From the very beginning that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, He gave His all for you. And it's important. It's important to God. Why is it so important? Why didn't he put any stories in the Bible about tithing? Well, he did. In the Old Testament, there was a story about a guy named Achan. You know, there, there was a, a time that the, the, the Israelites went in and they, um, 
They took over the city. They fought this city. And according to the rules, uh, the laws that were laid down, we're going to defeat this city. And every, all the spoils goes to the church. The very first fight, everything goes to the church first. Then when we go to the next fight, then you'll be able to get your part and have that. Well, this guy named Achan, you know, it, it, he kind of took some stuff and, and kept it to himself. So here's what happened. The leaders stood there and God told them, listen, I want you to march all 12 tribes of Israel in front of you. And I will tell you which tribe is in the bad that they stole from me. So all 12 tribes marched in front of the leaders, you know, and Moses and them guys are standing there going like this. And God says, that tribe right there. Achan's going like this. Oh, wow, they picked our tribe. Oh, bummer, man. And he goes, now march that tribe in front of you and I will tell you the family. And Achan's like, you know, oh, okay, I got to walk. I gotta, don't look at him. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. And he says, that family right there. And he picked out Achan's family. The next thing you know, he's going, now march that family in front of you, and I'll tell you the man who stole from me. And Achan's going like this. He's going like this, going, don't look, 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 don't look. And they said, that man right there, you stole from God. And God says, you're done. And they killed him. They took him out and they killed him. Then in the New Testament, there was a family, I mean, a husband and wife. You know, in the book of Acts, and their, and their name was Ananias and Sapphira. You know, and they made a sell on some land. But they, between the two of them, they said, all right, we're going to tell them we just got this kind of money right here. And, that's, and they kept the rest. So they went to church. You're going, ooh, ooh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You know, husband went first. You know, the wife was finishing up some things at the house, you know. And he went in there, and all of a sudden, the leader, Peter, he comes up to him and says, hey, dude. Is this true that you gave this much money? He goes, oh, yeah, man, I sold the property, you know, and here's, that's how much I got. He goes, the Holy Spirit tells me you're lying. And because you're lying, these men right here are going to carry you out because you're going to die right now. And boom, he died right there in the church. And these guys, they picked him up, carried him out, buried him. Then his wife comes to church. And she's coming in there going, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hey, 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 how you doing? Walks right by all the deacons that carried her husband out and buried him. And she's thinking everything's all fine. And all of a sudden, preacher man Peter comes up there and goes, is this true that you and your husband sold this for, you know, this amount of money? And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, we, that's all we, yeah, that's all we made, yeah. Well, you're lying to the Holy Spirit and the same men that carried your husband out are going to carry you out. And she fell down dead in the church. Well, thank God today God's so merciful and graceful that people aren't dying in churches. But I'm going to tell you what, I bet you some of the problems that you're having in your finances and you're going to church and you're watching this and you're, you know, is that you're having troubles because you're stealing from God. You're having physical troubles. You're having relationship troubles. You're having job troubles because you're stealing from God. God's having mercy on you to get things right. And not killing you, but in a, run, in a, in a long run, you, you are dying. Because you're stealing from God. It starts, it, it's the start, starting place for the New Testament giving was when God just said, you know what? I, I'm not going to stop this. The house needs to be taken care of. What's the house? It's the church. So what is he saying? He, he's saying, you, 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 how have you robbed me? You are not giving your tithes and your contributions. You are not giving your 10%. Now the contributions here in other languages, it means offering. Offering is above your tithe. Now understanding that, you don't have to give, you know, because here's the, here's the biggest question. A lot of people get me on this one. You know, I, I have this conversation quite a bit. Well, you know, can, you, can I give my tithes anywhere? No, it says to the house. That means to the church, your local church, 10% goes to the local church that you go to or you get fed at. Let's say that you can't come to, work, come to church because you work on Sundays or, or, or you got some other issues that you can never make it to church, but you get your feeding from watching online right here. And in that, you're saying, this is where I get fed at, then your 10% goes to this church. Now, if you go to another church and you, or you watch another church online, then your 10% goes to that church. 
You're out of order if you're not giving that 10% to the local church that you're getting fed from. If you're going to your church and you're saying you don't trust the pastor there or you don't trust the people there with the finances, I'm giving my tithe to this certain place over there, then I, I think maybe you just need to leave that church and find another church. It's what God is saying here. It's like it's for the local church. And then at that tithing point, anything above that is considered an offering. Now that is your free will gift. You can give that wherever you want as long as you trust the ministry that you're giving to, whether it be a missionary or maybe it be a food bank or, you know, or something as such as that. You know, or maybe it's that your church is involved in so much stuff outside of the community, you might as well just give that part as an offering with your check and just trust your church because they're involved in it and just watch the, the statements of how where the money is and, and maybe check up, up on, the, on the ministry there. But here it is. Are you ready to test God? Here's what he's saying. You bring the full tithes into the storehouse that there may be, a, may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test in this. And what he's doing is saying, I will open up a window and pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. What is God doing here? It's almost like when you look back in the, the old days, they called it throwing down the gauntlet. It's like, it's, it's back when they used to say, you, you made me mad, so what I'm going to do is, me, I'm going to challenge you to a duel. You know, and they would take their gloves off, or they would smack you in the face, or they would throw their gloves down on the ground and say, bring it on! That's what God's saying right here. God's taking off the gloves, he's throwing them down, and he's saying, bring it on! I'm challenge you. I challenge you to sit down in your finances and you and your household and say, okay, when it comes in, we're going to bring it all here. We're going to lay it out there. And we're going to say right off the bat, I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you. God is saying that. He's throwing it. Why? Why is he challenging us? Because he loves us so much, he's tired of us having all these problems in our lives because we're being disobedient to his word. He cares so much that he wants to challenge you to make your life better and care about you and these things that he's throwing down the gauntlet, he's throwing down the gloves, and he's saying, come on, bring it on. I dare you, I double dog dare you to put 10% first and give it to your, your church. Look, 90% with you and God is more than 100% with you and your own money. You will accomplish more in your household with 90% with you and God and being obedient to God than you will do by yourself with all your 100% all your money. I, I, I'm a living proof of that. I can sit down and talk to you. We can, we can sit down and talk finances all day long. God has given me wisdom and direction to be able to, to do stuff, pay stuff off. But you're saying, oh, I can't do it because I, oh, I got to pay this. I got the car payment. I got two car payments. I got a house payment. I got insurance. I got to feed the kids. I got to pay that. There's no ever no money. You can't afford to give God's money back to him. Because again, it's not yours. It's his. The 10% is his right off the top. You can't afford not to give his money back to him. I mean, it's like this. He's saying, come on, try me, try me, try me. That's what pretty much God's saying. Try me, try me, try me. How many remember your mom saying that, that, that to you when you was a kid? Try me, kid. I'm a, I'll get the stick, you know, or I'll get the belt. When your dad, try me, son. I, when, I, I, when your dad gets home. I mean, remember that? Yeah, I got one back there raising his hand, yeah. The church is for the local church. I mean, the tithe is for the local church. It is for wherever you're at, that you go to church, you're getting fed, you need to give your, your, your 10% to that church. Wherever. This is mostly right now is directed for you that are watching online. You're, you're sitting there every day and you're wondering why you're, you're having troubles with everything around you. And here's the trouble is that, that you are stealing from God Almighty. 
And some of you are absolutely like Paul is. You think now I'm your enemy. You're not liking me. Well, I'm sorry that I'm trying to tell you the truth to help you out and, and help things out in your life. But, but you, you seem to keep turning his deaf ear to what's being said, God's words being said. He loves you and he's challenging you. Why is the tie, why tie to the local church? First, you get the wisdom of a group. When you come to church, there's other people that are going through trials and tribulations of life as well, and you can get together, and, and, and you'll say, this person will say, especially older people, I remember when I went through that. They could tell you stories about, about when there was in the depression time when war was going on. They could tell you stories when all they had was a, enough to make biscuits and gravy. And they ate that maybe two or three times a day. And that's all they ate. They could tell you stories of when kids got sick and got really sick and they didn't have doctors and all this fancy medicine stuff. They had to come up with their own home remedies. When you come together as a group, you can get wisdom from that. The next thing when you come together as a church is that it avoids to send and forget. You've got to figure out how to, to, to get up front with your tithe and get it to your church right away and get it out of your hands. The sooner you get God's money out of your hands and out of your house, the better things are going to be in your house. I'm telling you the truth. If that means you got to figure out a way to get it online or stick it in there and put it on a mailing address, you know, stick it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, and get it out of your house, then do it. Tithing for your local church. It, 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 avoids, it, it avoids the tendency towards control. You know why a lot of people are, 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 are hesitant on tithing? Because they got control issues. I can make this work. I can do this. I can pay all this off and then I'll be able to tithe. Or I, 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 can, I, can, I can do this with my finances and, and get this paid and pay this and that like, and then I'll be able to, to be able to start giving to the church. You've got control issues. Let go and let God. Give him the 10% and then let him get involved in your house and take care of you and your family. So back into the fields that you have harvested from. Harvested is this. It is first, it's salvation. It's coming to church. It, it's the place that you, you put your, you, you go every Sunday and you're hearing word of God and he's putting into you the things that have made your life better. He was front, up, up, up front with you on sins that you, you like, I didn't know I was doing that was a sin. And then you confess the sin and that's like everything turned around in your life. So back into that ministry that's helping you get through life. His picture here of I will open up a window and pour, I will open up the window of heaven and pour out a blessing. It's like this, you know, we, we, most windows are horizontal. But this one here is going to be, it's going to be vertical, okay? It, it's vertical. And God's saying, bless you, bless you, bless you. And it won't, it won't get to you because the window's shut because you're holding on to the money. You're missing out on God's best because the window is, it's shut. And he's still up there just throwing it away, throwing it down there going, bless you, bless you and your family, because I what? I love you. I sent my son to die on the cross for you and raised him from the dead to give you salvation. I've got so much more. I, have, I love you so much. I care about you. And what you do, all you got to do is go like this. You just pull out your wallet, your checkbook like that, and you calculate, oh, that is 10%. It goes to my local church. I love them. I love God. I love them. I love God. You know why I'm saying all that? Because in... in um, in 2 Corinthians 9, it talks about this. It says, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will reap generously. And each of you should give that you have decided in your heart to give, and not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. If you're giving your tithes, you better still give it, even though if you're bitter. But I'm going to tell you what, it'll change your life even better if you do it with a loving heart. God loves you so much. 
that you can sit there and rejoice and praise the Lord. I get to tithe. I'm going to tithe. I ain't going to eat no sandwiches today, but I'm giving my tithe. And then what happens? Was that again? Opens up the windows. And next thing you know, he's throwing the heavenly blessings are coming down. They're falling on you. And man, your house is just turned upside down. Now look, I'm not, I'm not going to really sugarcoat it a lot of times. A lot of times, it's not financial blessings. Sometimes it's others. Kinds of blessings. Like what have you been praying for and the prayer isn't, isn't answered? And is, why isn't it answered? Because you haven't been tithing and the, and the prayers are going up and it's, it's hitting the ceiling of your disobedience. And then all of a sudden, the, the windows of heaven open up, the blessings are coming down, and the prayers get answered. Praise the Lord. How much would you, how much would you pray for one of your children to get saved and come back to God? How much money is that worth to you? A billion dollars. That boy over there is smart. Yeah. How about your health? How about some things that, that are in your... In, but it, Financially, then you're still taken care of. God's still taking care of you financially. Maybe just your ends are meeting. But in ends are meeting and prayers are being answered. What, what's that? Joy. Happiness. Man, how awesome would it be to have joy in my house, you know, because God's presence is there and prayers are being answered and we're being taken care of. Boy's got hot dogs and, and corn dogs and, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. He's, he's happy because his stomach's full because God's taking care of him. But here's, the, here's, here's, what, here's what, wait, most people miss this part. Read this one. It's Malachi 3.11. What is he saying? He's saying, I will rebuke the devourers for your sake so that it will not destroy the fruit of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. What is he saying there? He's saying your job, he won't let anything come against you and your job. Your, your, your fruits of what you're earning, your, your working, your labor, he's not going to let anything come against that. The devourer, the, the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God's saying, you know, he's standing in front of, of you. And he's going, bring it on, bring it on. You can't have them. I'm, you're the devourer, that's it. You ain't getting them. And he's fighting for you. You don't realize the spiritual warfare that's going on around you that's trying to kill you and you have no idea. It's trying to steal everything you have. It's trying to steal your joy, your happiness, your finances, your health. There's a warfare that you cannot see and you're oblivious to it and it's going on right now, this moment in time. Your disobedience is, is stealing from God. Because why? What is he saying back there in, earlier in the verse? He says, you are cursed with a curse. A curse means bad stuff coming at you. Bad stuff coming at you. Some of you are calling it, you're, you're watching on it, you're calling it bad luck. It's just bad luck. I always have this stuff happen to me. So it's just bad luck. No, it's not bad luck. It's called a curse. It's, you are cursed with a curse and things are keep coming after you. The devil steal, kill, and destroying you because of your disobedience to give your tithe. And some of you don't give an offering. You've never given an offering. Why have you never given an offering? Because you've never given a tithe. You don't even know how to give a tithe, let alone give an offering. Some of you feel really happy if you give a, put a dollar in the plate if the plate comes by you. You're all giddy and, oh, I gave a dollar, I gave five dollars. You brought in a thousand last week. God is up there in heaven. He's saying, listen, I'm, I, 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 I'm testing you. Now I'm, I'm turning the tables and I'm giving you an opportunity to test me. Are you passing the test? I'm going to leave with some principles. 
to look at. Stealing from God has significant consequences. You're going through what you're going through because you're stealing from the holy God. You're not going to church. You know, because I'm going to tell you what. The very first thing is that how I see it, a tenth is you give the first of everything in your life. Sunday morning is the beginning of the week. Tenth. I'm giving me, I'm setting aside, I'm going to church for a, a couple hours in the Sunday morning. Every day during the week, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to read his Bible. And I'm going to say a prayer to him and talk to him for a minute. You're giving the first part of your day to him. And then I'm going to tell you what, some of you are you're watching online. It's going to blow your mind. I challenge you that this week that you, before you get up, set your alarm 15 minutes early. Get up 15 minutes early and read the Bible and say a few prayers and talk to him for a minute. It's going to change your day, the rest of your day, this whole week. But not giving the tenth of your tithe has consequences. Next uh, a principle is this. Is financial partnership with God brings significant blessing. His word goes over and over and over and how two together are stronger than one. When you partner with God and give your tenth back to God, it belongs to him, and you're partnering with him and, and keeping that as a manager of that, you're stronger in your life that he can help you through things because why? He sees spiritually things that are coming your way, and he's stopping it before it gets to you, and you're, you, don't even, you don't even have a clue how he's protecting you. Next, look at is, is faith comes before miracle provisions. It takes faith to give your tenth, especially when you're in financial distress right now. Some of you, you're over your head. What you need to do is you need to start selling some stuff and you need to start going ahead and give it, and set it in your mind no matter what. Give your tithes. And then let God help you from that point and give you wisdom of how, because the book says, says you're a slave to the lender. He don't mean you to be in debt. He means you to be debt free so that you can be, hear his calling and his speaking to help out and things in a, a, that he's needing help with. How awesome it is to be debt free and all of a sudden God lays it on your heart to say, hey, you know what, that family, that family. And it's not Christmas time when everybody's feeling kind of givey, you know. It's Christmas time. I got, I set some money time to be givey, you know. I'm going to buy them a present, you know, this kid here a present, you know, da da. They don't have nothing. You no, know, it's all year round of something God would say, you know what, I, that person over there needs a mattress or they need a washer and dryer or they need something like that. And you go like, I, I, wow, I got the money. I got the money to do that because I don't got no car payment now. And you're able to go buy that for them to help them out in their time of need. And what are you doing? Now you're evangelizing. You're sharing God and Jesus by giving to them and helping their needs. And in that, there's a conversation that comes along and says, now I want to tell you about since I was able to help you out in that, can you take a few minutes and, and, and sit with, talk with me? I, I know one who loves you more than me giving that to you. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for your sins. And then his father raised him from the dead so that we can have a life after this life in heaven with him. That's the opportunity. And it all starts what? By faith, by giving your tithe. And then the last principle I look at is prove the tithe. Prove it. If you're not tithing, write down a little date, say maybe 10 weeks, maybe three months, you know, and say, I'm going to give the tithe for three months. Keep a little journal. I, I, test God on it. And he's the one that's saying it. Write your little journal. And anything that comes into your like that, I gave this much, I made this much, I gave this much on this date. And then keep track of the things that happen in your life through the next week. God showed up. I got overtime like crazy this past week. Was able to take that extra money and pay off this credit card. Or I was able to, this broke down and that extra money was able to fix this. I was praying and asking God to heal this person and they got healed. I was doing this and keep it. I, he says, prove me. I I'm, I'm dare you. I dare you to do it. Prove the tithe.
Are you passing the test? You're being tested as we learned last week, but God is also saying test him in this. This is a life-changing decision right here. Second to accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because you know why? As a controlling person, that you're not wanting to give up the money because you don't think it's there, you're letting God have control of your life and saying that I trust God with my life. And I'm going to start with my finances. That I trust Him. As we close in prayer, if you bow your heads. Are you passing the test? But if you're watching online, you're here today, I, I still challenge you that, that first comes for salvation. Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead to give you opportunities to forgive you of your sins against God the Father. Would you accept today, would you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If you was to die right now out here and it's raining, you know, or, or it's sun shining, and, you know, and somebody's texting and they cross the line and, and they hit your head on and you died, where would you go? Would you go to heaven or hell? Because the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ and being saved and born again and filled with his spirit. And that comes only by repentance, confessing that you are a sinner and you believe Jesus Christ died and was raised from the dead to forgive you and, and to give salvation to you. As we pray, we'll give you the opportunity to repent and pray and ask to be saved because today is the day of salvation. And for those of you that are believers in Jesus Christ and you're not tithing, today is the day to say, you know what, I surrender all my finances and I'm going to start with the 10%. And God, I'm going to ask you to help me to live on 90% and pay off my debt and get out of debt. Give me wisdom and direction with my finances to bring honor and glory to you, God. That be your prayer today as a believer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus to give you honor and glory and praise and thank you for this word. We stand in the words of Isaiah that this word will go forth and it will accomplish the things where and to it is sent. That you, O oh God, will be glorified in this. God, that you, O oh, your Holy Spirit, will come upon us, our, our, uh, the Christians, the followers of Jesus Christ, that they're not tithing, God, you'll bring conviction to them and to raise up to trust you by giving back to you what belongs to you. God, I need you will open up the windows and just prove that your word is true. And God, for those today that are, that are here watching that don't know you as Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation, that you'll hear their prayer of forgive me of my sins, Father. Make me new, Jesus. Be my Savior and Lord of my life. Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit so I can know you and serve you and follow you my life is not my own today. I give, you, I give you my life right now. Thank you for the new life that you're going to give me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Father, as you've heard this prayer, God, just move in their lives. Encourage them to tell somebody that they got saved today. God, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Bless these people. Bless those that are watching online you, to, to, to realize your, you are God, and you love them so much that you want to lift them up out of disobedience, lift them up out of sin, and make them new. Bless them. In Jesus Christ's holy name we ask you. Amen.